Welcome back to Keeping the Comic. I'm your host, Goofy Rexy. Now, we're going to be continuing here on our preparation for the upcoming Deadpool 3 movie, Deadpool and the Wolverine, that is set to hit theaters on July 26. I'm going to be going through some of my favorite Easter eggs here and little details from the Deadpool 2 movie that came out in 2018. Everything from really obvious references to details that I'm sure that you missed. So let's get right into it. Now, the movie opens up with a figurine of Logan, where he gets impaled through his chest, and Wade makes fun of him, something that's a recurring theme here throughout the entirety of the movie. Now, Wade also disturbs an impaled cheese knife, which if you go further in the movie, is the same knife that he threw at Vanessa's assassin, but missed. Now, in the scene, Wade tells the Cantonese mobsters that he took eighth grade Spanish and says, Donde esta la biblioteca? Which, according to him, means I don't bargain. Now, this is also a callback to Deadpool 1 when he tells Weasel that the Spanish word for cancer is El Cancer. And then in the scene where he gets shot by the mobsters and falls into the bartender aisle, he tells her not to panic, but takes a cigarette from her and tells her these things will end her life. Then I realized that in the very first shot of the movie, Wade is seen taking a cigarette, indicating that he is trying to end his life, which I thought was some cool foreshadowing. Now, Deadpool is seen putting on a wig in a strip club. This is a reference to Lady Deadpool, which I'm hearing through the grapevine that she's going to be making an appearance in Deadpool and Wolverine and might get played by Blake Lively. Dopinder also makes a reference to Kirsten Dunst from the 1994 film called Interview with a Vampire, where a child gets a taste for human lives and can't stop herself. Now, this is foreshadowing for Russell, where in his future, he gets a taste for human lives as well. Now, after Deadpool gets chased by the bad guy, he jumps into Dopinder's cab and goes to the front seat in a similar fashion, just like in Deadpool 1. Keep my hands on the wheel. Also, I just realized Deadpool has never paid Dopinda right for a ride. Like he just gives the guy life advice, which by the way is very bad advice and some high fives. Also, at the top of Dopinder's cab is a reference to Alpha Flight. Now, this is a Canadian superhero team in the Marvel comics that Wolverine was a part of for some time. And then in Wade and Vanessa's apartment, there's a picture on the wall that reads True Believer in the background, which is Stan Lee's nickname for true Marvel fans. Wade also makes reference to Superman versus Batman by saying that he fought a guy whose mom's name is also Martha. Save Martha! This is one of the many DC jokes that made wakes throughout this entire movie. Now, after Vanessa gets taken out, we cut to the opening montage. And just like in Deadpool 1, we see a list of the cast and crew, but the words underneath are basically just making fun of them. Although the aesthetic is a parody of James Bond as well as John Wick, this is probably because the movie was directed by David Leach, who's the director of John Wick, which is why during the opening montage, we see directed by one of the guys who killed the dog in John Wick. Also under writers, we see the real heroes, my ass. Now this is referenced in Deadpool 1 when the writers were described as the real heroes. Now in the scene where Wade meets Blind Al in her house and scares her, Wade goes rummaging through a stash of illegal substances and we see a box labeled The Cure for Blindness. Now this is also a callback to the very first movie in Deadpool where he tells her that the cure for blindness is in her house. Now when Deadpool is on top of the high rise building and he drinks a bleach called Cog Clear, if you look closely you'll notice that at the very bottom of the bottle the words Agent K are present. Now this is a clear reference to Josh Brolin's role in Men in Black as Agent K. Also, when he lays in the 1200 gallons of fuel before he explodes it, he says, y'all caught up now? Just like in part one when you said the same thing after giving us that recap. We see that later on where Deadpool wears Cerebro's helmet and uses the Professor X chair. He even references an X-Men with pigeon-like wings, which is Angel from the comics and also the movies. And then in the background, we see the young X-Men making their cameo. Weird that none of them said hi, right? I mean, we know why because of legal reasons, but still. 
Now, in the scene where Wade talks about how they need better labels for their supplies in the fridge, and he suggests Velcro, if you look closely, the names of the tape read Wheels, as in Professor X, Yukio, Beast, Colossus, and an NTW, which is Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Now, this means to me that Wade must have met the other X-Men. It just probably happened off screen. Now, when Colossus says Wade should come on the mission, Wade is seen reading a book called The Canadian Mounted, which is a book by John Hughes and is used as a prop in a lot of movies. We've seen actors like John Candy reading a copy of it in the movie called Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Now, in Deadpool 2, Wade becomes an X-Men, kinda. The yellow training uniform that Wade wears is reminiscent of when he became an X-Men in the comics. The home that Russell is being tortured in is called the Essex Home for Boys, which in the comics is run by none other than Nathaniel Essex, aka Mr. Sinister. Rumor that he's supposed to be a villain in the X-Men reboot and when we get that in the live action, right? Now, by the way, I love how everyone who has a name Nathaniel in the Marvel comics is like a powerful individual. Nathaniel Richards is Kang. Nathaniel Summers is Cable. And also crazy powerful when he's not Cable, aka Strife. And now we get this Nathaniel as Mr. Sinister. Now, when Wade is knocked into the orphanage, he meets a kid, which is the kid who plays the younger version of Legion in the series Legion. The kid is seen here eating a cereal called Hero Flakes with a picture of Wolverine on it. And then Wade goes and writes Ryan Reynolds over the cornflakes. So now I don't even know, like where does Ryan Reynolds stops and where does Deadpool begin? I, I don't know, guys, you let me know. Now, after the superhero landing, cause you gotta have a superhero landing, right? Wade does the callback to the four or or five moments to be a hero speech and just like before it ends with a bloody gunshot wound colossus is puking and i guess wade is just not meant to be an x-men right now when wade and russell get sent into the ice box he asks them if they have a sorting hat which is a reference to harry potter also his prisoner number in the ice box is actually 25601 which is the prisoner number of jean valjean Hugh Jackman's character in Les Miserables. Pretty sure I just butchered that, but either way, let's move on. Now, the Wolverine references, they just keep on coming and coming. Now, Wade also meets Black Tom Cassidy, who is the brother of Banshee from the X-Men and an ally of the Juggernaut. I guess that should have been our first clue that Juggernaut was going to be in the movie, right? Now, Cable arriving in the icebox was the first time that we got a real one-on-one -on -one fight in the movie. I think Cable bears a lot of similarities, by the way, to the Terminator with the one hand, a shotgun reload, also, when he arrives, Cable attacks two rednecks, one of them as Alan Tudyk and the other was, wait, like Matt Damon? Yeah, I really couldn't believe that Matt was the guy that was with the hat. I mean, the gut and the accent absolutely threw me off. That was one crazy ass transformation. And they say it took about like four hours with makeup and all that. I mean, they did that all for one scene that didn't even last up to a minute. Either way, dedication, I appreciate it. Now, oddly enough, Matt Damon's character is credited as Dickie Green. Leap, which is the name of the identity that Matt Damon's character steals in the talented Mr. Ripley movie. Now, Cable also robs a firearm store, and before he drives off, in the background, there's two police vehicles that arrive, but these are not regular police. They're apparently a part of the Mutant Response Division. Deadpool even tells Cable, hands off that kid, John Connor. Now, this is weird because John Connor was the one being chased by the Terminator. I think Deadpool's recollection of movies should be called into question if you ask me. And it's not just that. Deadpool makes fun of DC a a lot in this movie like when he tells cable you're so dark are you sure you're not from the dc universe <laughs> this is a reference to Zack snyder's and christopher nolan's row with dc when the contrast and the colors of each movie were on the darker side as well as the green nature of the storytelling also when cable asks him who he is wade says who are you i'm batman echoing Michael Keaton's immortal lines. There's also a reference to Jack Nicholson's Joker where the bang comes out of his gun at the back of Weasel and Deadpool in the X-Force selection scene. One of the amazing things I realized when watching Deadpool is that if Cable never came back to execute Russell, Deadpool would have died in the icebox. I mean, he had the collar on and the cancer was slowly killing him. Dude would have been gone a couple days. No wonder Cable said, 50 years from now, you're very dead. Deadpool also makes fun of Cable's height in the X-Force debriefing speech when he says Cable is like 5'11", not like in the comics, which caused a bit of controversy because Cable is like 6'8 in the comics. This brings us to the members of the X-Force selection scene. First off, during the X-Force member selection scene, Weasel goes through a bunch of photos in the line of photos. The first picture is actually a picture of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and underneath the photo was the nickname Notorious RBG, 
as she was known, which of course sounds a lot like Notorious B.I.G., who by the way, that's where she got the name from. That's how they kind of nicknamed her. And both of them, fun fact, were also born and bred in Brooklyn, New York. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a little pissed off about what the writers did to Shatterstar. Now in the movie, he said he's from the planet Mojo world which is like another planet run by the infamous villain Mojo. The movie makes Shatterstar seem like an alien when he's actually a human slash mutant who was raised in Mojo world. Also, the way they took him out was not exactly canon. Shatterstar is incredibly powerful. Not only is he smart and an incredible fighter with a cool healing factor, but he can also teleport. So the fact that he just loses his life to helicopter blades, that's just kind of anticlimactic. We also meet the X-Force character Zeitgeist, and on his arm, he has the number 116, which I think is a reference to the X-Force issue number 116, where the character debuts and also loses his life. Yep, just like in the movie, the comics has not been fair to this character at all or any of the other ones that are there because in issue number 116, a bunch of X-Force characters, they get murked. Although it was way more sad in the comics than it was in Deadpool 2. In Deadpool 2, it was just pure comedy. Additionally, I noticed that when Deadpool is choosing the members of the X-Force, he stabs all of their pictures with a knife but he uses a thumbtack on Domino, which signifies that she is the only member of the new X-Force team who is going to survive. Everyone gets a knife, but she gets a nice little pin to hook her down. Also, I like that when the team is falling from the plane and then Deadpool joins in the center, with their positioning, it actually spells a big X. That was kind of fun to see. Now, when Wade lands, we see an ice cream truck with the words Prior Treats, which is the name of Jean Grey's clone, Madeline Pryor, the mother of Cable, created by Mr. Sinister. Now, Brad Pitt's cameo was also very funny. I like how we made a cameo in the movie as Vanisher, and then Ryan Reynolds made a cameo in the Bullet Train movie as Carver. Deadpool riding a scooter was also a reference to Deadpool's vehicle sometimes in the comic. Deadpool says that Domino was probably created by a guy who can't draw feet, a reference to Rob Layfield, creator of Deadpool and Domino, who is famous for being unable to draw feet in Captain America's chest. Oddly enough, Layfield had a cameo in Deadpool 1, which we talked about extensively in our breakdown for the Deadpool 1 movie, which you can go back and check out after this one. Also, while you're at it, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can always stay up to date when we put out more comic book related content like this. Another great thing that stands out to me is when Wade meets the Juggernaut. He starts calling out the comics that he's featured in, namely like Uncanny X-Men 183, Thor 411, and Unlimited X-Men number 12. Also, the Juggernaut has his own soundtrack in a movie called you can't stop this mother and just for your viewing pleasure these are the lyrics fighting dirty fighting dirty you can't stop him he's the juggernaut you can't stop this mother which then is finished off with holy shit balls oh, holy shit balls oh, holy shit balls oh, holy shit balls oh my god i can't believe i just did that Either way, the entire song was sung by a massive orchestra, which is funny when you think about it. A large group of people singing, holy shit balls. <laughs> and I can just imagine Deadpool being the conductor while that happens. Absolutely classic. Also, get a load of this. Ryan Reynolds voiced the role of Juggernaut in the movie. Apparently, they ran out of money to hire an actor, so he just stepped in. Now, during Wade's second fight with Cable, he tried to repeat that scene in the X-Men Origin Wolverine movie where he deflects the bullets, but it just doesn't go so well. Oh, those bullets are like super fast. When Wade plays a song outside the X-Men mansion, it's a reference to the Say Anything movie. Colossus even lays in the bed just like Diane Court did in the film. Now, if you recall, Juggernaut rips Wade in half, and during the final fight, Wade uses tape to cover the parts of the suit that got ripped off. Before the final fight, Wade asks Cable about his dirty-looking teddy bear, and Cable says it is the blood of his daughter. And then Deadpool says, are you bear god? It's me, Margaret. <laughs> And I just still can't believe that he made that joke again. In Deadpool 1, when he's cutting off his arm at the bridge, he makes a similar joke that references a novel of the same name by Judy Bloom, which is about a girl who gets her first period. He also tells Cable, Zip it, Thanos, a reference to Josh Brolin playing Thanos in the MCU. And in the battle with the Juggernaut, Deadpool says, Hey, big guy, the sun's getting real low. This is a reference, obviously, to Black Widow's lullaby for Hulk to turn back into Bruce in the Avengers Age of Ultra movie 
Wade also calls Domino, Black, Black Widow, and Dopinder, Brown Panther. Deadpool gets impaled in the head, just like in part one, and starts having one of those lewd sessions. That's just one that you just gotta watch on your own time, guys. Uh, Deadpool also tries to stab a guy with a brick in the movie, which is a reference to Hobbs and Shaw, when Ryan's character tells his Hobbs daughter that a girl stabbed the guy with a brick. She stabbed one guy in the chest using a brick. Do you know how hard that is? Now this is pretty convenient because both movies are directed again by David Leach. The music that plays in the background of Deadpool's death scene is also the same score used in Logan's death scene as well. In the mid credits, Deadpool calls NTW 11, a reference to Stranger Things. He unalives Ryan Reynolds at the moment Ryan finishes reading the Green Lantern script and he takes out the first real appearance of Deadpool in the X-Men Origin Wolverine movie and he tells Logan that his old pal Wade is going to tell him to get back on the saddle. This is a reference to Ryan asking you to play Wolverine in Deadpool 3. I still can't believe that this is all kind of canon, by the way, which, by the way, it was rumored that Wolverine was always going to be a part of the plan to be a part of the next Deadpool movie, which was rumored to be a Christmas movie. So yeah, that's about it for all the Easter eggs and hidden details that I noticed in Deadpool 2. Let me know if I missed anything and be sure to check out our other video here, especially the one where we talk about Deadpool 1 and we go through Easter eggs for that one. And then also this other one here where we talk about how Deadpool 3 and Wolverine and Deadpool are going to be breaking the multiverse. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, thank you for kicking it with Keeping It Comic. Bye.